Let's say that you are a teacher and you've just received a student who claims that they were homeschooled before. And you're wondering, legally, what did this kid experience? Or on the flip side, let's say you have a child who suddenly disappears and you find out that their parent called in that they were now being homeschooled. Is that legal? Well, the answer to that question is really 50 different answers in the United States. The Homeschool Legal Defense Association, HSLDA, provides this map of the 50 states on their website, showing from green to light yellow to dark yellow to red the level of regulation on homeschooling, green states requiring no notice, and red states heavily regulating and monitoring homeschools. Kansas is one of the light yellow states with low regulation. Kansas requires homeschools to be registered as non-accredited private schools with their own custodian of records and an address. This is what the online homeschool registration form looks like. It's a one-time deal. After submission, there is no official confirmation given or response to wait for, and there are no checkups. You just fill out the form, click the button, and you can homeschool. Students already enrolled in a public school are required to be formally withdrawn. Kansas law states that homeschools must be taught by a competent teacher for 186 days a year, at least six hours a day, just like the public schools, and suggests keeping records and gives a list of basic standard subjects. But again, no one is checking. Kansas State websites also give some warnings. Don't expect any financial help for procuring curriculum and colleges are not obligated to accept your student. Historically, the U.S. national homeschooling movement has gone through a couple of stages. It really began in the 1970s with a couple educational reform authors and homeschoolers their work produced complied well with whatever local school districts or states required back then. In some cases, different states even required homeschool teachers to have teaching licenses. As time went on, more groups, especially conservative religious ones, became interested in homeschooling, but they tended to be more antagonistic and fail to maintain good relationships with local school district authorities. This opposition between public education and homeschooling led to this cycle of negativity, testing of the laws, fighting for your rights, and litigation. Homeschoolers couldn't seem to agree on a platform when it came to laws because some of them wanted the accountability of regulation and others wanted the independence. Eventually, in the 1980s and 90s, the faith-motivated homeschoolers rallied around the organization Homeschool Legal Defense Association, which built on the attitude of cooperation the original educational reformers helped establish. They promote a law-respecting professional image for homeschooling while still providing legal counsel to help families stand up for their rights. Today, the homeschooling movement has existed in its organized form for almost 30 years, so it's much more accepted and established than it used to be. New homeschooling curriculum is coming out all the time uh, from a variety of creative, well-researched, pedagogical, pedagogical perspectives. There's a lot of strengths and weaknesses on Kansas's homeschooling law. Some of the more glaring weaknesses include excusing laziness on the parts of parents and children without having any requirements for records or curriculum or a disciplined day. Secondly, the laws can also allow mediocrity. Just because someone feels like they should homeschool or should be able to homeschool doesn't mean that they have any business actually doing that. The most serious weakness to laws like those in Kansas is that they can hide abuse more readily when uh, there's no oversight of any kind. There are also a lot of strengths in the freedom that we have in Kansas to homeschool. 
The current system doesn't cost the government any money and in fact saves the government money because students are freeing up a desk. By not requiring the use of a certain curriculum, these laws also allow the freedom for parents to push their students possibly beyond where they would be in a public school setting. Parents can individualize the education they give their children and can be a little more innovative by not having to wait for the next curriculum change in their district. They can just use whatever they can afford, the most updated, and just buy however many copies of it for their own use without the red tape. If you find yourself gaining or losing a student due to exiting or entering homeschool, it's important to look into the homeschooling laws in your area. States differ widely on this, but informing yourself could provide you insight on a student's education and experience, or just peace of mind if you're losing them from your classroom. You also need to make observations instead of assumptions about these students because homeschooling laws allow so much freedom and diversity.